Please, save me. I want to live, Doctor. Xiao Xiao, find the medical ingenium and give that kid a shot. Hurry! I... I see. How is the front line? The Boris and Beast ships have already landed on the Feng Hu. It won't be long before this place is overrun as well. What about General Yue Yu? Any news from her? I'm her healer. I should stay by her side at a time like this. She asked me to tell you that she's not coming back. She must protect the Cloud Pier telescope. General asks you to... to save that kid. The girl fought desperately just to bring us all back here alive. I've never seen such a brutal fighting style. Her body... it's like she was split open. Just like... Her blood pressure is dropping! Do you hear me, Xiao Xiao? Loud and clear! Get me some tumble dust. We've got to start the operation right now! I... I will bring her back! Is that why you're so determined to learn my secrets? Do you hear me, Zhao Cho? I do. Loud and clear. So she saved you all in that great battle on the Xiangzhou Feng Hu three decades ago. But to your surprise, you discovered her boars and bloodline while she was at death's door. Moktok told me that she was a war slave who escaped from the Eclipse Pack. Oh, what a twist of fate. Turns out, she's from the same clan as I am. Now I understand. No wonder she displayed such astounding power, determination, and cruelty in battle. Turns out it's all because of her boars and bloodline. Mutt! Despicable mutt! <laughs> and she used the gift of her bloodline to destroy the Borison! <laughs> oh. Moon Rage. A blessing for wolves. And a curse for foxes. For Borison. To have their bodies torn apart by Moon Rage and transform into a beast oh, is the ultimate joy. But for you Foxians with poor regenerative abilities, it means certain death. Oh, with the burning fury in her heart, that Foxian general will eventually lose her sanity and indulge in endless bloodshed. The scars on her body will not be caused by enemy weapons, but by the immense power she can't withstand. One day, she will be torn apart and die as a monster. And in return for saving her life, you intend to give everything to solve this impossible puzzle. Hulei... Do you know the saddest thing about being a healer? All this time... I've devoted my life... to bringing back those who sacrificed their lives... to monsters like you. I exhausted myself... and my hands trembled. But I believed everything I did was meaningful. But once again... ...they rushed into battle. And then I heard of their deaths. They died under your claws... ...in your... ...jaws. 
amidst the flames of crashing star skiffs, and under the Lux arrow of Rainbow. Like a useless idiot, I saved a fish named Life out of the cauldron called Death, only to watch it struggle, dive back into the boiling broth. So I asked myself, why were they so eager to run toward their death after they had recovered from their wounds? Why wouldn't they value their hard-won life? All the doubts left me feeling lost. <laughs> I can smell your desperation. All the way down to your bone marrow. Eventually, I realized that their deaths held value. They placed the weight of their sacrifice on the living. Granting us strength. With a coin forged by their deaths, they exchanged something more in return. Everything I'm doing now, following you so closely, is just for one reason. Witnessing your death with my own two eyes. Even your death has value. It will pave the way for a peaceful war dance and a fully cured Feishao. Hmm. <laughs> the thoughts in your pathetic head are hardly surprising. Did you already know this? Yes, I did. As Borison, we understand the value of death more than anyone. And as a healer who has witnessed so much death, you won't be swayed by fear. Mm, what a shame, what a shame. Your story actually sparked a trace of respect for you in my heart. Can you even feel respect? With your corrupted heart? <laughs> of course because I caught a whiff of my own kind in you. Unfortunately, in the end, you're still just a weak fox. As the wolf's creed goes, gift the wolf a dead end where new paths arise. Raise him to a doomed fate where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in brutal battles embrace their eternal prize. That's why I'm keeping you alive for now. I want to show you how Borison truly respect their enemies. We will consume your flesh and blood, nourishing our own. We will crush your hopes and dreams, clearing a path for a hunt. Your feeble souls will witness a new future. A future that belongs to me. My lord, we received a message. Our arrangement at Stargazer Nivalia has been discovered. We must act quickly. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Hmm. Mock talk. What's that noise? It's the Sky Splitter. The ship that the war dance will be held on is about to set off. The Sky Faring Commission will clear the air routes. And if our star skiffs try to escape, we'll be spotted. Calm down, Mock talk. Look at you now, hiding and fearful. Where is your Boris and dignity? As I said, I'd sacrifice my dignity for your return. As long as you can come back to the Boris and Pax, there's still hope. Hope? <sighs> the Borison have forgotten the Wolf's Creed. 
Weak creatures put their hope in the strong, but the strong fight their way out. Bringing me back instead of choosing a new master only proves the decline of our pack. And as for the prophet who manipulated you into saving me, she's just a liar trying to use Duran's offspring. <sighs> Mock talk. Let me tell you how the Burisen will rise to power. We won't hide like rats in the streets of the Xiangzhou. We will be ravenous wolves, walking amongst a herd of lambs with our fangs bared. But Great Warhead, our packs are not here. We can't go to war like this. Our packs are not here. Wherever I go, everyone is the pack. <laughs> Stay away. Just don't come any closer. No! Predators at the top of the hierarchy. As wolves, we create fear. We don't become servants to it. If you're blind to the path, I will be the crimson moon that lights the way for you. Share my crimson blood with our brethren. Use it to infect those Foxians and strike fear into their hearts. Now, you devious monkey, come out and face me. Chao Chao. Mosa. Run. No, he can't run, and neither can you. <laughs> You've come at the right time, monkey of the Yao Qing. Tell your general. Tell her that I will unleash a massacre here, drowning the Xiang Zhou La Fu in blood. From this moment on, wolves bearing my blood will hunt on every street, feasting on the followers of that devilish archer. Follow me, my cops. We shall stride among the prey. Give the wolf a dead end. When new paths arise, raise him to a doom fate where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in brutal battles Embrace their eternal prize! Do you hear that? The rumble of the cannons. It brings back all the memories of past battles within me. My return will bring back the wolf's creed. In my own way, I shall save our weakened pack and restore it to its former glory! to attract people to come and watch if they didn't make a huge spectacle. <laughs> March, you haven't forgotten what you came to do, have you? As a representative of the Sienjo Lafu, I will defeat all challengers. That's the spirit. Sounds like you're all fired up. If you could just keep your legs from shaking so much, it would be more convincing, March. As the saying goes, the disciple takes the toil of their master. Remember, 
You are here under the identity of a Lawfu Swordmaster, taking the place of your no good master Yenching as the ringmaster. But what am I supposed to do if my opponent for this round is super talented and just wipes the floor with me in seconds? I'm still a beginner in swordplay. I don't know where I got the confidence when I agreed to help General Huayan. Come on, there's no need to worry about that. If you are defeated, then your opponent shall have to answer to me. Although, if that happens, the honor and the glory of the Sienjo Lawfu shall all be taken by the Juming. <laughs> uh, Master Yun Li, please, I'm about to compete. Can you say something that will give me a little confidence? Marge, think about the great storms that you, nameless of the Express, have weathered along your many journeys. There's no doubt that you have faced far more terrifying enemies than your opponents here today, right? Don't you feel a lot more relaxed looking at it that way? I've trained hard in the art of swordplay over these few days. It's time for me to get in the ring and prove myself. Let's go! Master Yun Li, I don't think I'm completely ready. March? There is no such thing as completely ready. Miss Yun Li, Miss March, this way, please. I was informed of your arrival by Madame Yukong and came to greet you personally. The news that you will be the ringmaster in place of Lieutenant Yan Ching has been made public, Miss March. Just now, as I passed the contestants hall, I overheard them all discussing this news. The most common question I heard was, who is March 7th? If they ask you this, how will you introduce yourself? Do you have something prepared? March 7th! The invincible March 7th! <laughs> Next time you try to bluff like that, at least make it convincing. <laughs> I see you are both quite relaxed. Impressive, given the imminent danger you face. Miss Yun Li's contestant information was registered for the war dance a long time ago. However, as a last minute entry, the Skyfaring Commission has taken care of the necessary procedures for you, Miss March 7th. Please, follow this path. The contestant hall is just up ahead. Thank you, Miss Shikwe. Come, let's take a look around the contestant hall. So, <laughs> this is the contestant hall. Oh, there are so many people. March, before the war dance begins, allow me to give you one more lesson. My grandfather always told me that a weapon mimics its master. That means that a person's weapon will reflect their habits and personality. You've seen me wield old metal before, haven't you? Tell me, what did you observe from that? Master Yun Li's old metal is taller than a person. Being able to wield a weapon like that must mean that you have ridiculous strength, right? Observing the weapon that your opponent uses, assessing what kind of battle skills they excel at, and where their weaknesses lie, is the key to victory in battle. A shockingly heavy sword like mine, for example, is obviously not suited for a long, drawn-out battle. So, it would be best to find a way to drag the battle out. Why would you tell me your weakness? That's the only way to ensure that we have a fair fight, don't you think? I don't want to see you go and lose to someone else, after all. Now is a perfect opportunity to learn how to evaluate your opponents. Let's use the people here in the contestants' hall to practice. If you know yourself and know your enemy, you will not lose in a hundred battles. Know myself, and know the enemy. Let's see, who should I ask first? Ugh. I am not 
used to wearing clothes like this at all. Oh, you're March 7th, the stand-in for Lieutenant Yun Cheng, correct? That's right. And you are? As you can see, I am the journalist entrusted with interviewing contestants on site. I see the Sky Faring Commission has really gone all out as the host. Interesting. That's right! A big event like this just can't go ahead without a few of us running around. <laughs> Since the competition is getting started, could I ask you some questions that are on my mind? Oh! Uh, great! First, the question that is on everyone's minds. Lieutenant Yancheng is not appearing in today's war dance. This is just gossip from unreliable sources, but I hear that Lieutenant Yancheng is seriously injured. Is this true? Uh, my apologies, this was very unprofessional of me. I see that Lieutenant Yang Ching has his own affairs to tend to. Then, let us look forward to seeing a valiant performance from you, Miss March. Once the war dance begins, you will be challenged by master swordsmen from many different worlds, Miss March 7th. Are there any that you're looking forward to facing in particular? May I ask who that might be? So March 7th is ignoring everyone around her and is declaring her will to challenge the Merlin's Claw of the Xianzhou Yao Ching. Thank you very much for accepting my interview. Much appreciated. Was there something you wanted to ask me? Ah, yes. Yeah, this is just a regular Cloud Knight Devastator Glaive. Oh, I understand what's going on, Miss March 7th and Miss Yun Lee. <laughs> I'm actually not a contestant. I'm just here as a security guard. Nothing out of the ordinary. I guess you could say it's all fair winds and calm wolves. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Another awkward pause. I know it. Uh, did you get it? Uh, wolves sounds like waves. It's a funny pun. He's actually explaining his joke. Ah! Making things awkward really is my weakness. There are still many guests arriving here. Please be cautious. Understood. <sighs> I came here because I wanted to meet the great Lieutenant Yan Ching I've heard so much about, and finally cross blades with him myself. Who would have imagined that he would take a disciple and have her be the ringmaster in his place? This is no more than running away from a fight, and is a great dishonor to the Yao Ching. This last-minute replacement, March 7th, who exactly is she? That's right! I'm the March 7th that everyone's been talking about! What? You're March 7th? Don't worry. I'm a newbie swordmaster who's only been practicing the art of swordplay for half a month. March 7th. Standing before you is a seasoned Cloud Knight who has practiced swordsmanship for over 200 years. Tricking the opponent into underestimating me is a valid tactic too, right? The first round of the war dance is about to begin. Are you feeling okay, March? Me? I'm fine. As soon as I saw all these people gathered here, I suddenly felt weirdly relaxed. Looking at these contestants, 
I suddenly feel a lot calmer for some reason. I understand why you wanted me to know myself and know my enemy. I don't feel as nervous as I did before. So, do you want to go out and see the ring? I knew it! Let's go! Able to see the war dance's official venue. Wow, so this is what it's like from the spectator seats? Look over there. That's the ring we'll be standing on. Master Yun Li, I I'm getting nervous again. Can I really do this? Well, it's too late for nerves now. It's almost time! Almost time for what? As soon as I think about the mission General Huayan gave me, oh, my heart starts racing like crazy! What do I do, Master Yunli? It's when it stops beating that we need to worry. <laughs> Just take in the atmosphere and prepare yourself. I have to leave for a moment and do some inspections around the ship. This was also part of Grandpa's orders. I wonder how Master Yan Ching is doing over there. Hey, focus. <laughs> <laughs> 